Hi and welcome back. And today I'm going to cover off how to install Home Assistant on Proxmox. Now you may be asking, why would I want Home Assistant? Well, here's why. Look at me gone all 2023 and gone vloggy. So the reason why I've done this is I've just come out into my kitchen, which does have a you know a, a smart switch, which I am going to show you in the near future. But however, I wanted to show you one of the wonderful integrations that Home Assistant has that I use all the time, which is with Philips Hue. So I've got a motion sensor inside the conservatory, which I'm about to step into, that after sunset and before sunrise, it will basically turn the light on when it sees motion. And you can do this standardly with Philips Hue. However, the Home Assistant one has a lot more features around luminancy and various other stuff that we can use and we can integrate it with other bits. So as we stepped in, you can see the lights come on. I didn't touch anything, it just turned on. And it's done by this wonderful little sensor here. And the great thing is we can do a lot more with Home Assistant. So now you know why you want Home Assistant, let's go through the guide. Now all I'm gonna do is cover off how to install it in Proxmox. The actual configuration and usage will follow on separate videos because it's a very, very large and in-depth setup. So I'm gonna cover off how to install Home Assistant on Proxbox now I absolutely destroyed my cluster. So I've had to start again, which made making this video actually quite enjoyable really because I'd already got Home Assistant running and I thought I really want to do another video. So that's clearly why I wrecked my cluster just to do so. But yeah, never mind. Right, let's start with the basics. So we're just going to create a VM. I'm going to call this Home Assistant. OS, it will go on, well, we're not going to use any media at all, so that's fine. System, we can leave as it is for now, that's not a problem. Disks, we're going to remove, because we're not going to use that. Cores, let's give it four. Memory, let's, I don't know, let's give it, what should we give it, eight? Let's give it eight for now. And then network, we just need to decide which network we want it to run on. Now, the difference between mine is VMBR zero now is my normal LAN and one is my VM LAN. So I'm just going to, or VLAN, so I'm just gonna keep it like that and click confirm. And I'm just gonna leave that because I've got to do some other stuff now. So the next part that I need to do is basically to pull down the, drive or the actual installation now i've already pre-populated this and i'll put you the link in the description later now it'll depend on obviously when you go about downloading this but realistically at the moment this is what i need so i'm going to do a wget pull that down i'll take a few minutes So just wait for that to pull down. Okay, so that's pulled down. So what we now need to do is unpack that. And again, this will this command will depend on the version that you're using. But mine, for example, is that. So obviously the 9.4 is the latest version at the time of publication. Now you don't see any prompts for this. So you just sit there and the next prompt you'll see is just as the standard um, syntax. So I'll wait until it's done and then I'll show you the way to check that that's actually unpacked. Okay, so the easiest way to check that, I just do ls. That's given us the information that we want. So, so the next thing will be to import the disk. So what we're gonna do is just run the following command. And again, you'll need to be aware of this 101 is the VM number that I've got dictated by here. My PVE shared is basically based on the fact that that's my shared drive and I want to use that. Now that will give me a little bit of 
redundancy if I get any challenges. So that's going to import that disk. And what you can see is it's added that disk there. And the last thing to do will be add in various well actually set that setting. So what that'll be is QM set. And this one will be 101. Then be dot dot school Z zero. And then the last of it will be this basically. And that should work. Mm, I have to make it raw. There we go. So that's done. So if we go back onto Home Assistant now and look at the hardware, you can see the SCSI drive. So what we need to do now is make sure it's set to boot first. Won't be sure it will be, and it's not even enabled, so make sure you enable it. Drag it up. It's probably worth leaving it under the CD-ROM in case you ever need to do anything. Ah, uh, do you know what I haven't done? I haven't created a new EFI disk and disabled pre-roll keys. So all I should need to do, actually, is let me just stop this. So one thing I haven't done is add EFI disk. Ah, yeah. You now what I haven't done is set the BIOS to EFI. So I'll stop that. Hardware, that needs to change to that. Try again. There we go. That's uh, that's what we was looking for. So yeah, you need to make sure that you've set the BIOS to UEFI. Totally forgot about that. That's quite important for me to get Home Assistant back up and running because it's not working for me at all at the moment. So. Right, okay, so we should be able to go to homeassistant.local8123. So yeah, if we go there, we'll get the preparing Home Assistant. And once this is up and running, we can fix all of our problems. Okay. Name. Oh, we'll just go with Andy. Password. We'll just go with something for now. I'll fix this later. Ah, it does all this. I'm, yeah, see how much I want to give away. <laughs> I don't live there. Let's put it that way. That's close enough. We'll go with that. I don't live there, but hey, that's fine. Uh, I can send anonymized data. I don't really want to do any of that, too, honestly, right? And it's found some stuff I can automatically set up. I'm not going to do that necessarily right now. And you can see oh, somebody was playing Loser by the Cardigans earlier. So if I go into settings, one of the first things I'm going to want to do is go under Andy, actually, and Naval Advance Mode, because that gives me options so, so much more. And welcome back. Hopefully you found that video useful. Just bear in mind that I did originally set the BIOS wrong. You do need to make sure that it's available for UEFI or else it won't work. And also to make sure you've got an EFI disk without pre-enrolled keys. That will make it work really, really easy for you. But that's primarily it to get it up and running. Now the actual configuration and usage of Home Assistant is a very large topic that I'll be covering off in the coming weeks. 
because it's not something I'd want to squeeze into one video. So, until next time, please hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you soon.